Hello. Okay, so that looks like it's registering sound finally. So I'm going to have to assume. That, uh, oops, what's going on here? This is how rookies do their stuff. Advanced audio properties. Hello. Okay. So I guess uh, I don't, um, don't anticipate anybody actually popping on here and checking this out. Successfully copied, as I have very few viewers, which is fine for now. Uh, anyway, I think oh, I know what I need to do. This is all very exciting, but at a certain point, I'll actually start working, and then uh, then things will be better. Can't even the funny part is is the meme for old man yells at cloud is so popular that I can't even find my own channel when I do search stuff. Oh, I'm live now. Excellent. All right, so let's turn this on. And get some sort of cool inception effect. There we go. Yay. Okay. So you'll hear a little weird thing for a second, but anyway, that's what's going on. And uh, <laughs> that's not going to help. So now I got to find one more thing. All right. Anyway, this is, I'm sure, very exciting for most of you. I wonder how the uh, delay stuff works. As you can see, uh, the stuff that's not me is Todd's book. Hopefully the link works. There we go. Okay. All right, boys and girls. So this is InDesign. InDesign is one of, uh, it's an Adobe program. Small caveat, uh, I've got a cough as I've had for about two or three weeks from a cold. And then it hasn't helped that I smoke cigars occasionally. Uh, don't do that at home, kids. Although I just got to check the YouTube box that says my content is not for children. So I shouldn't be telling children not to smoke because theoretically I'm not making content for children. So children, do what you want. Uh, wait, that might not be the right. Anyway, so uh, every once in a while I might have to cough, and, which is gross, but whatever. So this is InDesign. InDesign is a multi-page document uh, program, design program. So people that have Photoshop, for example, Photoshop is the thing that most people get so they can dig around with photos and do logos and whatnot, but Photoshop is actually not very good for text. You think it might be good for text because you've kind of just used Photoshop all the time, but it's really not. And it's especially horrible for any sort of multi-page text. It does logo stuff pretty neat if you want to make like a cheesy fucking bevel on your uh, stupid fucking uh, poster or whatever. It does posters okay. It's hard to edit and kind of move the text around, all of that, but it does it because Adobe wants to make sure that all of its programs kind of do all of the things in that respect. So Illustrator, for example, is better at text and it's still not very great at it, although they've got 
an, the ability to set up multiple artboards now so that you can create like um, branding, which would be like your business card and then like a poster and then like a postcard or whatever and be able to kind of drag the same logo around and all that. This sets aside esoteric arguments about uh, fucking vector graphics versus raster graphics and all the rest of that. That's not what that's not what this means. So InDesign is the thing that they set up to design multi-page documents. Uh, originally books, but now you can do multi-page PDFs. InDesign even allows you to do PDFs, symbol it S, uh, PDFs that uh, are interactive. So you could create a multi-page, I could create this book and we could create a PDF version of it that had links that people could click on and it would go places and that would be cool. I don't think we're going to do that right now. It's just print based. Um, InDesign is not the hardest Adobe product to learn how to use, but it's not just like sit down and do shit in it and you're good to go kind of thing. So what you're looking at here is a bunch of different tool menus. And then here is our thumbnails. So this is thumbnails of the book. And if I squeeze that out, then we can see multiple thumbnails, which can be useful. It's actually fairly useful for uh, review purposes. When Todd and I talk on the telly, uh, AKA Skype, and a lot of times we'll, uh, there we go. We'll have the thumbnails opened. Thumbnails behave differently where you can't like move individual items around. You can just kind of click on it or whatever. This is the work table. These are the spreads for the book. This is a bunch of stuff. All these lines matter for design purposes when it's done. Um, oops, there we go. That's more like what it'll look like. Like that's just a regular spread. And I don't need all those thumbnails open, so I'm going to do that, right? So spread, another spread, which in this case, double page art. Uh, oops, there we go. All right. So the idea of this, you also have different, uh, so initially you have different settings. You, you, you saw a piece of art back there that looked kind of pixely, and this stuff actually looks a little blurry and all that. What happens is sometimes we can get sort of low res pieces of art, but what uh, you normally do is you get up here into your display performance and you have it set on typical so that you use less memory. I could even do fast display, which does that, which would be for manipulating text for the most part in large bulky things, but that's not super helpful for figuring out like, you know, what the image in, a, in an art book, this isn't the most helpful setting. So we're gonna go here. So he wanted to do a book that featured a little bit of his older stuff. He's had one other art book come out before, but was primarily the newer things. So scroll up here on the old thing. Uh, title page here. And then as you go along, when we start out, we've got uh, testimonials from people. We've got early artwork. And then it is roughly chronological for quite a while. This is earlier D&D &D stuff. We start in here. Come on, sucker. You can see some D&D &D concept stuff. There's a big owl bear. There's some dragons. He did a lot of dragon uh, design for Dungeons and Dragons. There's some Dungeons and Dragons characters, uh, classic uh, Ragnar, Ragnar or something, which was the fighter guy from third edition. There's a beholder. Then we get into some paperback covers. This was a series of covers that he did with a uh, drow protagonist. Um, drow's a dark elf, basically. And then Dritzt, I think, is the name of the drow elf that's very kind of popular in fantasy fiction stuff. He's got two swords and a big old black panther or some such. This is this section, so this talks about his swords, this talk, and then there's there was a lot of sort of wraparound book covers. So a lot of those spreads are throughout here. And then we get into a big section where it's all just stuff. Spread after spread and all that. Anyway, so book design is an interesting cat. You basically create what's called a grid, and you can find stuff on the interwebs all over the place for that as far as uh, what grids are and what they do, but they're basically a, a, 
template that you sort of plug your stuff into. InDesign allows you to create what's called a master page. So this was the first typical master page, and it essentially is a piece of texture that Todd created for a background. And then we've got our little footers here, Found Worlds, Todd Lockwood. And uh, if you want to find this Kickstarter, by the way, Found Worlds, Todd Lockwood, Kickstarter into Google should make it pop up pretty easily. Uh, I could theoretically, I guess, put a link somewhere down in the description of my video, but in all honesty, I haven't used YouTube's new uh, doodad, so I don't know where there is a place to even put uh, a description, honestly, if there is one. So, hmm, what are you going to do? So, uh, anyway. So you create this sort of master page. This is a placeholder for page numbers. So it basically is saying, make this a page number. And then the program is keeping track what page number uh, each page is on. So for example, this is spread 136, 137, pages 136, 137. Should we go there? It says 136, right? So that little placeholder text replaced this little logo, this little thing right here. And this little thing, um, is an initial that you create when you do the page basically it's like a little shorthand for this is that page so you can create this as a master page and then you can create uh, a grid or lines where things always appear so this outline is for pieces of art that are going to take up the whole page but aren't going to bleed meaning go off all the sides this little red line is kind of the bleed line. So uh, the diff difference between bleed and non-bleed, going back to, uh, did I just lose that freaking spread that I was just on? Just disappeared for fun. All right, cool. So let's go to the hair. So this is full bleed, meaning that it goes clear to the gutter, which is this point. In, these are going to be two pages like this, like the spread of a book uh, this way, I guess. Um, so this is full bleed, meaning it goes off the edges, and this is not full bleed. It is bleeds off the top, but does not bleed off the sides. So that grid that I set up basically has lines to let me know the art should go out to this line and should go out to that line, and then it can bleed off the top. It could also, uh, we originally, when I did the book, had this art set up to do this right with the border but we decided that the full we liked the full bleed off the top and um this edge i think was a little closer and it was maybe somewhere in here so we're like you know what we're gonna do more art there needs to be a little bit of a, a gutter in between these two but we can go clear out to there and full bleed off the top and that's gonna look better i guess this is definitely not for kids now and then uh we got the full bleed off the three sides that allows space to put some text for this piece of art and some text for that piece of art, assuming it's not long. If it is long, then you end up changing up the, the grid a little bit, which is fine. Every single page isn't going to be exactly the same. This is sort of the baseline for it. So the next page... No? Okay. There we go. The next page is exactly the same as far as the layout is concerned. And I'm using placeholder text blocks right here, so you can pretty much ignore what they say. But that, for example, is a double page, so it's different. Still has the page number below there, right here. Um, this corresponds to the normal grid on this page, but this breaks it into little text. And again, that's what these little master pages come up with. So this is basically for art. Now, you saw a little subtle difference of these things disappearing, right? So this is the spread that I created for art where there's not going to be room for page numbers, but we still want the texture. That's probably not going to get used as much anymore because of the way we, I set the grid out, but originally I had it set up. This is set up for pages that might be primarily text, like this guy over here. So these page numbers are set up the way that they normally are. 
but I've created these little grids in the middle to flow text into. So, boom, text. All right. And then you can mix and match. So this one is for art. Um, yeah. So that's what uh, that's what this spread is for. And then there's a spread where you want text but no page numbers, which I don't think has come up, but it might. So I created the page. And then there's a spread for uh, the Dritz uh, Dark Elf section, which you wanted a darker. Uh, pattern in the background, as you saw when we went to this spread, for example. So this, and that, and that basically, these templates are set up so that I'm not having to lay in a piece of art every single time, and have to deal with that. And then here is the grid setup without texture, and that happens primarily on pages. Let's see if I can find one. And that has page numbers as well, so it's actually fairly rare. So there are certain pages like this page where I wanted to leave it white. I usually want to leave it white when there's uh, black and white sketch sketches because having that sort of color texture on there, I think, detracts from the black and white a little bit. But then I had set up one for there to be page numbers in that lower section. And honestly, I'm not even sure if I've used it yet. What you can do, though, a lot of times is I'll apply a master page to the page I'm working on in order to line my text up. Uh, and then I'll remove it because I don't want the page numbers or I don't want some element of it there. But I do want this text to still be aligned to some arbitrary uh, grid that I've set up. So anyway. That probably, that may or may not have sounded uh, very complicated. It's not actually that complicated once you've gotten a degree in it, which I do. <laughs> um, but a lot of it is just basic, uh, basic book design. There are a million books on how to design books. And uh, there are various philosophies, the Swiss, uh, the Swiss system, or there used to be like a grid system in the 60s, 50s or 60s that originally set up like all these very hardcore uh, grids within grids that you could uh, stack and then set up a book to where everything had its place and all the rest of that. I did not set up a very complicated system for this because it's uh, it didn't need it. I basically want to keep, if possible, my text blocks right above the title like this. But a lot of it is all this full page splash. In theory, I would take these blocks here and make sure they're the same. I would make, make sure that all of the, the text blocks are sort of the same width. That would be a way to really double down on that kind of stuff. But honestly, in my mind, it, it's based on kind of the amount of content, the amount of words and things in the book, in the box itself, because I'm looking at not just this alignment type of stuff here, but I'm also looking at the negative space in between these two objects to make sure that they're not uncomfortably close to each other or whatever. Um, and that's all arbitrary. Uh, that's what they call gestalt, essentially. Like this is touching that line, which is a fuck up, right? That needs to be there. Uh, and then these are also over the line. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do about this page number here, which may be getting removed, actually. I may have to do that. And in fact, I'm just going to leave that there. So yeah, I did a piece of design work. Awesome. And then here, same sort of thing. Have stuff lined up over there, preferable. That does not preclude floating things. For example, here's a good example for people who want to learn how to design books from a YouTube video of me working designing books. Um, this, based on what I've been doing in theory, should come down to here. That's where most of them are, or that you know, where a lot of them are, and that would be that would be consistent with the text block itself. But that's too sp specific. I'm designing a book. I'm not designing a book on how to keep text blocks consistent. So 
the idea of this text is completely unconnected to the item that it's about, right? So that's why that got moved up to there. It's still in a line with this. That's a compromise that's easy to make. Uh, and in this case, this sort of thing sort of connects together as well. I could have maybe, you know, stuck it over here where it comes down and sort of does that. But then when you come down here, you're having to kind of come back to here. It's all a matter of like where your eyes being led and all that. So having this here is still sort of true to the grid that I set up. But now this is connected to that, obviously. So people are like, oh, Silver Dragon is this thing. Brass Dragon, you have to assume is there. Copper Dragon, you have to assume is there. You have to make some kind of assumptions. Uh, I know people are idiots nowadays, but you have to make an assumption that people can figure shit out eventually. This is really nice um, because you have this flow of this dragon into this dragon. So those were definitely cho chosen, chosed. These were chose, chosen to be on the same page over each other by me because they looked good together. So here's another thing, actually, and I haven't fully decided because you can always go back and change things. As you can see, this is aligned this direction, right? I did that because I wanted to do that, and that's fine. However, that's aligned to there. And uh, I just realized that um, there's a couple of them like that. So this is aligned to there. Oh, excuse me. So I have to make a decision at some point whether or not I want to, that I'm okay with that going back and forth, or whether I want to come up with more of a consistent thing. So for example, that, if I was to do this, right? How does that look? Not bad. Um, so I may just leave that there and, and be good and maybe try to keep it. It's text is going to be easier to read when it's aligned to the left than that. Although a couple of lines is actually not that big of a deal. People can, can parse that out pretty easily. This, however, if I was to align, then I'm going to run into, you know, I'm going to have to figure out how to line it off of that. Um, so that one actually works decently that direction. This, because it's talking about the next pages down here, definitely works that way. So that gives the uh, an extra visual cue, basically, that you're like, oh, you're talking about a thing that's further along, and this is talking about the thing that's on this direction, right? So, so yeah. These are all super micromanagey stuff that we'll get into near the end of the creation of the book, for the most part. I did it uh, for the standard stuff, like this is lined up here, and that's lined up on that edge, because it just looks a little bit nicer. I actually don't really like... Yeah. Sometimes it's day to day. I may wake up tomorrow and feel like it needs to be over one. At some point, obviously, you kind of have to lock it in and be like, all right, we're done. So what's going on right now is Todd and I, yes, I just didn't see that straight on enough. So I'm going to have to go through and adjust a lot of those probably. Todd and I had gone through on various meetings to decide what art was going to be in it. Originally, we had, you know, four or five hundred pieces of art, whatever we had. We had a bunch. And then uh, we went through in several waves to basically eliminate art, take out suboptimal pieces. The um, idea behind that, the design idea behind that, was that that's lined up on the thing though right oh it is okay sorry I'm thinking of two things at once so instead of me going back through and sort of adjusting all of these this way this is already lined up to a grid so I'd be better off adjusting found worlds that direction back on that master page which means I need to before I forget go back up to the one I adjusted 
which is in here somewhere. In there. In there. program, the new update on this program is not playing very nicely with my Wacom tablet. Adobe and Microsoft seem to be intent, well I should say it's it's pro it's most likely Microsoft's fault with their stupid fucking uh, ink, ink thing that they have that they insist on sticking on PCs, which basically fucks up all my Wacom settings because I use a tablet because professional um, anyway I'll go back and find that at some other point so when I come up here this is the master page and I look at this and I realize like oh yeah that actually probably needs to be over a little bit like one nudge and I just nudged it you saw it flicker over here because it was updating literally every page that, that master page was applied upon. So anyway, so we went through and made a whole bunch of decisions regarding, is that the one? I think that was the one because that was pretty far off. We made a whole bunch of decisions regarding uh, which pieces of art were going to go into the book. And we had an opportunity to have more art We would have had, uh, we could have had a whole bunch of more, a whole bunch of art, or we could have had less art. There we go. Uh, but larger. Perfect. Snap to guide. Um, and I, uh, we, I wanted, and we both ended up wanting, um, that makes it sound like I had to talk him into something. I really didn't. We both wanted less art, but larger. So that's what sort of led to the grid system that we have where we went through and just cut down a whole bunch of art and then tried to get a lot of cases where we either just have a spread or one or two pieces of art on either side. That's going to be obnoxious. Huh? This is not going to matter. Too much. All right. Anyway. So this, for example, has three. He did a lot of Magic the Gathering art, and uh, when we get down into that, there definitely are going to be more pieces of art on either page. Uh, two to a page, four to a spread, two to a page. So that's a thing that'll happen. Right now, however, you kind of work in waves. So we, we basically cut all the art we needed to cut then uh, placed the art roughly so for example when you go down here into here uh, you can see it's just kind of chaos it's just pieces of art thrown on here these are small uh, the, everything is kind of art that's that should be full bleed and it's not right so it was it was just throwing pages on and now what i'm doing today and tomorrow i might get done today but probably not is uh, I'm placing, I'm trying to place the art specifically where it needs to go, including um, the little text boxes, even though I haven't filled out the text boxes yet. I want to get them in place because that's part of the design. So for example, this guy needs a text box. So I'm going to go up here. This is going to take forever. Copy that. 
And the reason I'm copying that is because it will be used uh, more often than for me to just copy like one of the blocks or whatever. Even though, let's get rid of let's get rid of this block for now. Throw this one on. All right. So here's a good example of I do not have a grid uh, applied to this right now. It's basically just blank. So I can go like that. Even though these page numbers are getting covered up, I find my grid lines. Oops. I shorten this down. I align this uh, to one of the lines that I normally use uh, I use it the other direction sometimes as well, but it's basically lined up. Then I'm going to get rid of these page numbers again because they're buried, and then I'm going to just sort of arbitrarily decide where I want this, right? That's not too bad, but usually something like that is going to look better. Actually, that's going to look better. Now I'm going to realize that this gap is too large and looks weird. So I'm going to go back to the other sort of motif that I've been doing, which is two shift clicks. So I'm basically going to just do that instead. And now it has an even amount of space from here all the way around. All right. So that is breaking the grid, but in a consistent way. Dun, dun, dun. So that's a done page essentially. Now what will happen in the very last step is we'll go through and we'll make sure we have the highest resolution uh, stretch, uh, highest resolution piece of art and then we have to change the color profile on it which basically means basic color profiles are like RGB or CMYK. Uh, CMYK is what you use for printing. RGB is what you use for like uh, the internet essentially. It's additive versus subtractive color, which is a whole thing that I could do a thing about and won't right now. Everything that you see on your monitors are is you you could assume is RGB. Printing needs CMYK. It stands for red, green, blue for RGB, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black for um, printing, which is four color printing. So a piece of art that's electronic needs to have a color profile applied to it, which is just a series of, of text that tells the printer how to treat the color so that your red still looks like the red that you want it to look like. So these turned get turned, if any of them are CMYK and probably a fair number of, or sorry, RGB, and a fair number of them are RGB because he does digital art. He does painting, he does oil painting type stuff too, but any of the digital ones. So they get turned into CMYK, and then each printer uh, can have like a specific profile that works with their machines, their, their specific brand of whatever print machines they work. So uh, I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. There we go. So then you apply that profile to it and... Uh, poop it out. And that'll, that'll be one of the last steps along with editing the, uh, the caption boxes and all that. So what's going on here is a printer needs what's called bleed, which is a little bit more of the image than where what the size of the book is. So this is the size of the book. I think it's 9 by 12, not uh, 9, or whoops, 12, 9 by 12. There we go, 9 by 12. So 18 by 12 as far as the spread is concerned. The printer wants another eighth of an inch usually off the side to here, to this red line. And that is so if the print, the physical ink shifts a little bit or, or, or something happens or, the, or when the book is bound, which means stitched together, if that image shifts a little bit, you're not chopping uh, because uh, things are printed on much larger pieces of paper and chopped to size. So you don't want like a little white streak over here on the sideline because the artwork didn't go clear off the edge. So that's full bleed basically. So this uh, little red line indicates where that bleed is. 
what I just did with this is the image itself was a little bit large, even larger than that. So to maximize the amount of image on, on the spread, I shrunk it down to the, the side. Proportionally, it's a little tall. So we're going to lose a little bit extra on here. But if I lined it up with the horizontals, then these verticals would be further in there. And, and you might get that little white thing that I was talking about. So basically, the shortest side gets uh, there, the closest side there. So it gets, gets lined up. Uh, same with this, all right? So we're lined up here and here, which is good. We lose a little extra on there. And then you sort of, hmm, cat hair. And then you sort of arbitrarily, oh, or mustache hair, I guess. Uh, you sort of arbitrarily decide shifting up and down, right? Because this could shift all the way up to about there, or it could shift all the way down to here. A lot of times it doesn't matter, to be honest. It purely is personal choice. But what happens is, is I usually want to keep the logo or his signature with a little space. And then you start looking up here for anything that's awkward that you can't live with. That's a good gap. This bothers me a little bit, right? So I might do that, even though I don't want to get too cramped down in here. So it's all, and people aren't even going to see this, to be honest. They're going to be looking at this dude right here. And they're going to kind of be looking back here, and they're going to go, oh, this is cool. And their attention is, most people, their attention is going to wane as it comes off to the sides. Nobody's going to look at that little doodad and go, oh, that's weirdly close to blah, 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 or, you know, so. But I need to. That's the, that's the job is to kind of overanalyze that kind of shit, right? So you watch for things like this claw getting too close, right? Or this getting, the little moon getting too close. That's why this one as you can see, is very tall. So we're going to lose the top and the bottom, or we're going to lose, the other option of this would be to lose the full bleed, go down to about right there, and get more of the painting. Um, and that doesn't bother me. Like, it's fine compositionally. It makes it seem more vertical because everything else in the painting is kind of vertical. But at the same time, losing some floor and some ceiling, that doesn't bother me either. And what that does is allow the central image to be larger. Then what I look for is I don't want that awkward white line to be on the line or, you know, part cut off. So it's got to be probably right about in there somewhere, um, probably closer to here. And that also allows a little gap on the moon. So these are all the decisions that get made as you go along. Uh, this is where I am at right now. So this is basically as far as I've gotten. So we do this, and now because I copied in I can paste these little text block things in here. Uh, this one, I believe, is already lined up on the grid. As you can see, there's a bunch of wing and some treetops that are getting cut off. But the good thing with a lot of Todd's art is they were designed for book and magazine covers. So uh, when you do that, you, you design in a quote-unquote dead space to put like the book logo and that kind of thing. So this is a little trickier because this is actually a pretty neat painting all the way to the tops and the bottoms. Um, so this, this is definitely one I think where I'm gonna have to live with uh, if I'm gonna have to live with some extra white space around it in order to get more of the painting in. And the other thing that happens is like, you gotta be flexible because Todd can come along and be like, hey, I want this. Like you, you need to agree on basic things as you go along and you're just sort of like redoing, redoing work. You don't wanna redo work. He doesn't want me to redo work because he's paying me and if I have to redo work, then I'm gonna end up getting paid more. Um, so the basics of the thing we have agreed upon. 
but he could come along and say, I don't really like the gap in this. Go ahead and make it like the rest of them, right? I'm actually looking at it and seeing that it's asymmetrical and not really loving that. Um, however, let's see here. It's the same bit. So the grid is asymmetrical. There we go. So now they are symmetrical, and I'm losing a little off this side. So is there anything on either side of this that's interesting enough to keep or to slide a little bit? And you want to kind of default to the artist's composition if possible. So either side of this painting is essentially fine to be dead but I want to go as far as the bleed so we still get that full bleed. But now the painting is sort of centered up again instead of being slightly asymmetrical off to one side. Right? So that's more of what Todd intended. Because when he's painting this thing, I mean, he's making these decisions where this chick is, right? And she's got to be in a certain spot this way in order for the things to work, right? And so you get this tree coming down to here and you get this thing kind of coming down to here and and this kind of coming down to here, and then all of this doing this kind of stuff, right? And so for me to fucking offset that too much, um, it's it's going to work. It's still going to kind of bring you, but instead of being brought to the center of a thing, uh, you can't see what my hand is doing. It's, instead of being brought to the center of a thing, you're maybe bring, being brought to like the side of a thing in a well, and so that's no good. Now I'm going to go back up here because I'm okay with what I just did. And I'm going to I'd rather have this one the same way. And now we've sort of established a precedent. All right, so by being okay with this, I've just recovered a lot more of this painting and basically created a more vertical, uh, there we go, more vertical composition, which is what, again, what the intention was. Mm -hmm. That was, you didn't notice any change there uh, because I went from texture with page numbers to texture without page numbers. You can't, you're not going to be able to see this page number down here. So I try to change it to the texture without page number just in case. If something weird happens with the printer, sometimes transparencies get weird. And it would, so what would happen is it would try to print those page numbers and then it would print this whole thing over the top of it. So now you've got some page numbers and like a footer layered underneath this. And then if the color is weird or something happens or whatever, uh, I don't know, it just it bugs me. I want to make sure that the shit is clean as, as possible because I, I want to take as many things out of the... You want to control as much as you can control, basically. And I don't want some weird thing happening with the printer where all of a sudden there's like a ghostly fucking page number under there or whatever. Oops. 
that was a case where I thought the side ones were what I was going to, but I'm actually got to go to the top and bottom. All right, cool. And then shortcut key to blow that up. Always learn your shortcut keys. And now we have a spread. All right. Now there's going to be an issue where these spreads, there's not a text caption. So a lot of times that text caption has to go on the previous page. So <coughs> a lot of this layout, there's going to be another wave of this layout being adjusted. So what the goal is this time is to get all this stuff in place like this. And then Todd and I will go back through and Todd will be like, oh, maybe this one can get shrunk up and I want this one bigger. That's the most pain in the assery one because that means I have to literally like switch both pieces of art or whatever. Uh, but that's what you got to do. So once that those decisions are made, then everything will be locked in place for sure which side stuff is going to be on because I always want the full bleed on the right hand side because when you're paging through it, then you've got a really easy thing to see. It works like navigation basically. And then once those, once that's locked into place, then I can go back through and uh, put uh, dial the captions in. Basically, that'll be one of the last steps in the actual design design part of it before we get into the weird technical stuff like making sure all the caption boxes are spelled correctly and making sure that all the color profiles are correct and all the rest of that stuff. So this is pro this is like the second to last step in the actual design. See, now this is kind of awkward because he's got these claws here and here, and you don't really want those touching the sides or, you know, that's pretty fucking close. And that's pretty fucking close here. Um, and then his logo is way down at the bottom here. So to get that logo in there, that means that that top claw that took that decision away from me, right? Because I might think about doing something like that because I kind of like the darkness up here. Um, but that makes that a little uncomfortable. But doing that so you don't even know that there's a little... Uh, wing hook up there. You're basically just chopping off the knuckle. That's what that's going to be right there. And that's fine because we've got the, the black leading off the page here. I could blow it up a little bit more and slide him away from the gutter either direction. But I think that that's fine. That doesn't bother me. Todd's pretty aware of gutter stuff. Um, <laughs> so uh, he'll let me know if he's uncomfortable with that part. So, and here's a case where I haven't marked, a lot of them we marked which ones we wanted larger. This one isn't marked. This is going to, hmm. Yeah, this, this is going to look better full page. I'm trying to think proportionally to like what fits into the space a little better. Because sometimes it's kind of a crapshoot of like, oh, either one of those could be big or small. Some he has favorites. He's like, I definitely want this painting on the left to be like large and in charge. This actually has a fair amount of dark dead space to the right. And I say dead space. There's no, there's never really dead space in, in any good painting, but there's dead space in, in paintings. It's space that the artist puts there to let the eye rest, or it's in this case, all that darkness is acting as a framing device uh, in order to add contrast to the bright center, that kind of thing. So this hodad, he's we're gonna lose some tops and some. Oh no! Well, let's see here. We just. Oop. No, this is gonna get more messed up. I forgot about the side. That's a little weird. Losing so much of that side. Huh. Honestly, I'm going to try these the other direction. Oops. See what this looks like as a full 
unfortunately, this may have to, I'm already starting to think of breaking the, the grid up even more and having this thing bounce across the, the aisle. Todd is uncomfortable with images touching directly, which is a thing, and that's fine. It's his book. I am more comfortably with, comfortable with it. So, for example, in my perfect world, I would just have these two butted up against each other. His argument, which is um, a valid argument, is basically allowing the eye to kind of rest and have a little bit of space in it. I like sort of matching shape, right? So this kind of thing right there and the fact the wings touch and all that I think is kind of neat. Um, but again, not my book. So, all right. Now I'm gonna have to keep the edge of this wing, right? Because you can't, that doesn't work at all. So there's got to be that little side framing device there. So then it's just a matter of is there anything super awkward over here, which there's not. Um, we're about as far as we can go top and bottom, so that's going to pretty much have to stay the same. So I can live with this, right? There's there's a little gap there, which to me is a little weird, but let me, uh, there we go. Do this before I forget, get rid of the page numbers. I'm still getting texture in there, there we go. Um, so yeah, so to me it's a little weird with the gap, but I'm still getting this, which is cool. And now I'm getting this, which is cool. Um, it'd be neater if this came over to there, that came, but that, I mean, it's that's a small thing right there. Uh, and then, uh, I could put the dark texture under there, and that's the beauty of this, is it's non-destructive, so you might as well try. So I could do that. Okay, so that's a winner. The problem is now that she's right on this gap. And to get her off that gap, She'd have to either be clear over here or clear over here. That dragon almost coming off the page. But he's still on the page. Or this would have to go onto this back side. And I guarantee you that this one on this side of the image is not going to look as good. Uh, do I guarantee that? Yes, I guarantee that. This is chaos. Yeah. Everything, everything about that made my eyes hurt. Okay, so let's do... Or we just have to be okay with her on the fucking uh, thing, but we're not, because she's like the main person. She's literally like the focus of the, of the thing. So we got to go to about there, which means... Something like that. Now this this is challenging and fun. Uh, this bothers me a little bit because proportionally it's not quite thirds. Like so what you want to do when you break grids or you do things anytime, and I've said this on several videos, anytime you do any fucking thing from a creative standpoint, it needs to look intentional. Unless your point is to look unintentional, but then you're intentionally looking unintentional. Ha! It always needs to look intentional. So that whole adage of like, I want to break the rules, you know, first thing I want to do, learn how to do a thing, and, and why do I have to follow these rules? Everybody rebels against 
the rules of creative craft right out of the box because they're fucking idiots because they don't believe that generation after generation of people have done this before them and figured out what works and what works aesthetically oh but the people that work there that break the rules are they're the trendsetters for the future and all that that's great but for people don't pop out of the box breaking the rules getting famous breaking the rules like that maybe a little bit more now because of the interweb i don't know my point of this is learn the rules just always learn the rules be a little conformist for a little while learn the rules and then break the rules right because um you can't break rule a you can't break rules that you don't know that's that's the main one it's like i'm going to do this this way it's like you're just being a fucking idiot like people have figured out how to do this take their lessons they've done they've made mistake they've made all the mistakes and they've done the things the hard way so go through that figure that out and then and then if you figure out that there's something that you can tailor easier to your aesthetic or to your whatever then you know you're part way there you haven't had to go through all of their steps and then go through all your steps anyway point of this i have forgotten except that that is a little awkward to me because uh rule of thirds guy rule of thirds is that whole adage where you're sort of like breaking things into it's a filmmaking thing where you sort of break everything up into like thirds and stuff is not very usually things are not interesting directly in the middle now there's many exceptions to that um stanley kubrick as a director um uh one of the andersons wes anderson have all done very well lately uh george miller with mad max fury road where everything is sort of center punched that's great and that's cool the problem with this is it doesn't look intentional because the center line is right here that's my point it looks like it's kind of awkwardly fucked up so either somewhere over in here where you've literally got kind of a, a thirds especially because you're working with a grid in uh, uh, this book specifically is kind of old fashioned in the in the respect of like conforming to a grid I don't have text splashed on all fucking weird angles across the thing he wants it to look elegant and and classic basically um, so this does not look elegant or classic it looks fucking awkward and weird so in reality where I had it honestly or somewhere right in here looks good but then she's all fucked up uh, so what I'm gonna do by the way Adobe if you're watching your fucking default pencil tool thing has broke um, so normally see what the fuck was that you saw me literally walk over and choose this with my pencil and then it went it went that did that for some reason right like what the fuck and it didn't well it didn't stay selected because i didn't i don't have to stay selected on so let's do that all right Oh, look, and it just did it again, right? Ah, fucking bullshit. What I want to try to be able to do, what I used to be able to do for Adobe... Uh, put some kind of weird fucking bug in the newest update of this is you're able to just draw directly on the thing and make little marks like that so now when Todd and I talk about this oh and then it just arbitrarily added a border here for no reason too so that was cool um, when we talk there's like a little mark that I can basically do the thing on so anyway 
I understand. I mean, I literally live with a person who does code for a living, so I understand that code is complicated. Uh, it just still is pretty amazing to me when shit gets broken that's been like fundamental behavior in a program for since the program came out. And then I try to ask a question in forums or on Reddit or whatever, and they're like, oh, just do this basic, th like literally telling me how to do the thing, which I understand why women feel sensitive about mansplaining, because it's like men, the thing is though, here's the secret women, uh, men mansplain each other as well. So, you know, you can feel special because we, maybe we do it with a little more of a condescending tone in our voice, I say condescendingly, uh, but we fucking do it to everybody because, you know, they're like, do this. And I'm like, I'm not asking how to do a basic fucking function. I've used this program, as I said, since like 2003 or some shit. I'm saying that a thing that used to do X now does Y. So that's sometimes a little frustrating, but I mean, that's forums in, you know, in general, right? That is cool illustration. Although I like this little C thing here because uh, it makes it look like it says Clockwood <laughs> instead of Lockwood. All right. All right. Uh, so no one's ever going to see the middle of this in the gutter, but. Excuse me, and I know that was gross. Normally it happens a lot more. If I had a bunch of time, which I don't, I'd probably put these in Photoshop into a spread and do some kind of cool connecting tissue here. But the, the reward for the time is not going to be super high because it already works pretty well. So it would just be like micromanaging a thing that doesn't need to be micromanaged. All right. That's one of the things you kind of have to learn as you get older. It's like, is it going to matter? It's 95% matter, or does 90% matter? Everyone's like, oh, you got to try as hard as you can all the time. I get it. You want to do the best possible work you can. Oh, I see. But there is absolutely a time investment versus return. And the fact that most people, the va who are you trying to please, right? The vast majority of people do not see that extra 110%. They don't see that 10%. They probably don't even see that 100%. Sounds like I'm saying don't try. But what I'm saying is try smart. <laughs> Be smart about what you're going to fucking deep dive. Design work, film work actually too, just about anything. I just refer to it as sort of polishing a stone. And I get it, sometimes when you polish a, uh, the left side, all of a sudden that opens up weird shit on the right side that you hadn't noticed before. And so you end up kind of going back and forth and back and forth until something matches. I did that switch because all the direction in this leads towards the middle, which I like. Um, there's also this kind of thing too. It's kind of arbitrary though, because both one of these is going to get shrunked. more dead space at the top of it, quote unquote, dead space at the top here. These both again are so good all the way up to the edge. I think there was a little while, again, speaking of work going into the wrong energy or whatnot, 
where I was very worried about like where I'm where am I going to put the caption boxes? And it's like you know what this is an art book. If I have to make an index at the end, which we are going to have an index, and if that index needs to be the thing that people refer to instead of normal caption boxes, then so be it. present this stuff the best way possible. You can hear my cat snoring in the background. It's adorable. You have to take my word for it. Had a full day of running around and sniffing things. We're rearranging the house right now, which is why any glimpses you get of the background are pretty chaotic, but it's opened up more running space. Yeah, this is just going to have to be a, another the grid. So what I'm going to do now, which I probably should have done about four back, oops, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. These pages are based off of each other, so if I change this one, it will propagate to that one, and I think it might propagate to the, uh, the other ones too. Not all of them. Not sure what this is here for, actually. Not sure that I've used it. Ah. Yeah, it seems it seems like it was kind of a fuck up. So let's do that. That one's good. That one doesn't matter. That one goes away. And that one's already set. All right, cool. Done and done. Now I have a new grid. All right, cool. It is three o'clock. I've been blathering on here for quite some fucking time, uh, and I'm going to go make a sandwich, and that'll be the end of this stream. Hopefully, that was entertaining. If there are any of you on here uh, who, again, are interested in Todd's Kickstarter, I will put a link, although it's almost, I think there's about two days left on it. Uh, but I'll put the link up anyway because I think Kickstarter will have like a forwarding thing. So if we, if you're seeing this like way past the Kickstarter and you want to buy the book, I think through the Kickstarter, you'll you'll be able to find the book somehow that way. Oh, we're over an hour. I just saw the little counter there. Um, if you've come here because of the Kickstarter and you want to hear me wax on poetically about a bunch of random shit, uh, check out the other videos and make sure to subscribe. At some point in the future. I'm going to try to start chopping these up and, and putting like little smaller increments of things. But honestly, I mean, I have a couple of friends that just uh, are, that just turn it on and just leave it in the background and uh, listen to me ramble on about stuff and or work about stuff or whatever. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, take care. We'll see you next time. <laughs> are you sure you want to end your stream? <laughs>